Okay. All righty. So we'll see if anybody joins. It's kind of late, you know, but um, that's the okie doke. All right. I'm going to, I'm trying to get myself logged into where I can see. Okay. Okay. So we've got, gosh, I hope. Hey, for those of you that are in here, did you just see me completely walk through my house and do all of that? And I, cause I thought we were not actually live. I'm kind of <laughs> curious. <laughs> I was walking around with my phone, like get, grabbing last minute stuff, talking to Scott, thinking, you know, um, okay. So, so Scott Walker is here with us as usual. Hello. And he's going to, oh, here, I'll let you say hi. I'll be quiet for a second. Hi. So uh, Scott's going to be doing a t-shirt and I'm going to be attempting to tie up a tapestry for Gray Goyo's Garden and Tie-Dye for his 1,000 subscribers giveaway. I've been stalling. So I decided I would try to go live and then have Scott here tying with me as motivation to get myself in gear and get this done. All right. We'll just chit chat and work. And if I yep. chit chat and work, I get and one done, I'll start another one. So what, uh, what do you, so obviously you're doing a t-shirt. What, what are your plans? I don't know. I seem like I can't get a center fold to uh come out right um I, and it's not just it's my mistakes like i keep knocking my ice barrier over or you know it's just some stupid mistake it's not necessarily my fold or my eye placement it just seems so just kind of kind of more uh, my like ice, like adding my eyes and stuff so i need to human human operator error type situation yeah maybe maybe i don't know take a little bit of uh advice get some advice or something because i don't know well, about just, color about color placement with them. oh yeah yeah no that'll be fun 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 so let's i'm just gonna look here and see we've got who's in here with us Teresa's here joy tammy donna mel star 83 i'm sure i should know who that is who who are you what's your <laughs> mel star 83 uh Lila's here. Hi, Moon. Moon dies. Lila Moon. Hi, Moon. Okay. And Scott is here. Okay, so I've got this 57-inch by 57-inch tapestry from Sunshine Joy, which you can go right directly to their website and buy them. Or you can get them from Amazon, which is, like, super easy to deal with, especially if you got Amazon Prime. They cost a few cents more from Amazon, but I'm talking, like, a few cents. So what I'm first going to start to do, I'm just, I got this huge piece of fabric out in front of me and um, I'm just going to come corner to corner and I'm going to fold the tapestry directly in half. And I am not a tapestry master by any stretch of the imagination. I'm totally winging it. And every time I make one, I just pray they turn out. So, so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just folding it, like I said, directly in half. And I'm doing a lot of it off camera because I'm doing what I do with my t-shirts. I'm kind of like shaking it and snapping it and trying to get everything to line up. So trying to make uh, tutorials on tapestries are hard because they're much larger than my table. So, so I'm gonna try to get everything kind of lined up best I can here smooth out the wrinkles and do the best I can here with that. It's already not lining up, go figure, but we're going to do the best we can. So, so yeah, Greg, Greg made it to 1000 subscribers. Thanks to all yes. of you guys. That's a major, major milestone when you're in the YouTube community. YouTube puts a lot of restrictions and hurdles on people, unlike Instagram and TikTok and all of that. So to make it to 1,000 is a lot of work, and he made it, and I'm super proud of him. 
And like I said, thanks to all of you guys that have subscribed and watch his videos and give him those watch hours. Those are so important. The thumbs up, the thumbs up, tell the YouTube algorithm to uh, share his videos. And that's why I'm always begging for those thumbs ups because it just helps get the content out there. So other people can um, learn how to tie dye. Okay. So I've got the first full direct, just directly in half. Just like a piece of paper, I've just folded it in half. And now the next fold, I'm going to fold it the opposite way, just directly in half, and I'm going to make a giant square, or close, close to, to a square as the fabric will allow. And again, you're going to see me pick it up off the table because it's bigger than my table. And I want to try to shake it out a little bit and kind of like, you know, when you're trying to fold your bed sheets all by yourself, you know, you gotta, gotta do what you gotta do. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm poking in on you, Scott. What are you, you explain what you're doing right now. I'm centering, I'm centering my shirt, putting sleeve inside a sleeve, uh, create kind of a mirror image on both sides. Yep, be a very important sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. You know, not all shirts need to be centered, but really, you guys, if you want to have, you know, good work, good saturation, equal saturation, mirror image, stuff like that, just about every pattern should be centered. Okay, so I should, and I wish I had a piece of paper right here. Oh, I think I do. Let me see. No, maybe I don't. Let me go grab a piece of paper. Oh, here, I'll just do it with this paper towel. So I know I explained it, but in case it's confusing. So I first folded the tapestry right in half, got it all lined up, and then I just folded it the other way. Okay. And now you got like this outer edge, but then you also have like the center corner. And all of my folds now are going to be airplane folds working towards that center corner because that'll be the center of the tapestry. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Well, thank you. So, oh, Melanie, see, I told you, I told you, Melanie. See, all of you guys have a stage name. So we have our real life names, what we go out into the world with, and then our, our handles on TikToks and YouTubes and all of that are different. And so for me trying to keep track of everybody, challenging. So hi, Melanie, my dear. And thank you. Yes, I made my hair. I look like Ronald McDonald. <laughs> Bo picked it out. So I was going <laughs> to blame Bo, huh? I was going to, well, no, I was going to go for purple like I normally do. And he's like, no, go pink. He wanted me to go like, like pink, like a uh, Dharma trading company, hot pink, pink. And I'm like, ah, I think that's a little too light. So I, I went for the magenta galactica color. Okay. So what you can see here is I've got, I've got my folds. So what I'm looking for is that center point. This is my, just like what we do when we're, when we're folding our shirt. This is like the center point of the, the shirt and all my airplane folds are gonna be going in. You see why I wanted to do this live because trying to explain it for voiceover when I like don't even really know what I'm doing, it, it gets real difficult. So I'm gonna pick up just the, the first two layers and I'm gonna hold down my center point. Let's see, can you guys see? So my center point, I'm going to fold back. I'm going to fold back to this edge, just like I do when I'm doing my shirts. I'm going to hold down that point and try to keep it crisp. And when you make your pleats, try not to have a bunch of bunched up fabric up in there. Scott's still, from what I can see. He's still working on getting his shirt centered. He's the, yeah, I'm about the master, gonna, master center. Start putting my my uh, 
bark one there. But you know, it's the foundation for your tie dye. So taking your time with that all important centering step really makes a big difference in your final results. And you know, if it takes you five minutes to do it, great. If it takes you an hour to center it, fine. You know, every shirt for me is different. Sometimes I can do them in one minute. Sometimes I spend 20 minutes because a shirt just gives me the business. So you just do what you got to do. Okay. So that is my first fold here. Okay. And like I said, I am not an expert, you guys. I'm, those of you that make tapestries a lot, you're probably going, no, that is not how you airplane fold a tapestry, but that's how I'm doing this one. Okay. And then I'm going to just do the same thing. I'm going to just pick up that fold that I did and I'm going to fold it back right in the same direction where I'm going. Folding down my center point. And if you guys have not made a tapestry yet because they are extremely terrifying, which I get it, I am here to tell you that they, if they turn out, they're so much easier than tying a little tiny t-shirt. Once I get through all my 50 boxes of just miscellaneous t-shirts, I don't know, I might just go like tapestry crazy for the rest of my tie-dye career. So do you guys know um, on Instagram, Moon, Moon Dipper Dyes. She's amazing. She makes the most gorgeous tapestries and she is my inspiration. I, I look at her tapestry work and I am just I'm floored at that the beauty. Okay, I just flipped yeah, it over. This, she is. <laughs> She's incredible. She's on another level, isn't she? Another, yeah, like seriously, and and she does other stuff. I mean, tapestries are her like our main thing, but she also does clothing, like dresses and stuff. And I know she has a shop. You know, she sells her work, her tapestries and her work. A lot of you know exactly who I'm talking about. Because when you see her work, you're like, oh, yeah. Moon, Moon Dipper, she's amazing. She does have a YouTube channel. She, she, I think she only has three videos. Um, but you can go check her out. Yeah, I'll have to follow her for sure. From my understanding, just from, like, you know, being a stalker, she started out... Uh, like a baby clothes tie dyer and okay imagine the difference of you know tiny baby clothes versus giant tapestries right i think she probably felt like what i was just saying like she made her first tapestry and said forget this <laughs> forget yeah. tiny baby clothes i'm i'm going for the the bigger easier projects okay so now i'm going to just repeat the process over on this side i hope you guys can see so i've got my point over here I flip the whole thing over and I'm just going to airplane fold back just like I did on the uh, first top side. And let's see, I'm, I'm peeking up at you here and there, Scott, and I'm seeing it looks you've got your center. You, you drew your center line on with your washable marker. Mm -hmm. And you're pleating that line. I'm pleating that line, yep. Okay, so I did my airplane fold and just smoothing everything out as I go, just trying to keep everything. Is my music too loud? I mean, is it is it picking up too loud, you guys? Uh, uh, not to me, huh? -uh. Okay. So on my other channel, uh, Pacific Northwest and Beyond, I made like the kind of music I like to sort of just chill out to. And I can't listen to music while we do these live videos for copyright reasons, but I can listen to these because it's, you know, their, their music. So you can have a little bit of sound in the background and I won't get copyright dings. Okay. Okay. So now I could, okay, let me show you. So I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, 
five folds on the top and on the bottom, there's just the two folds, like when I do a t-shirt. Now, I'm gonna try to make flower petals and stuff on this one. So I don't wanna go too much, um, too many pleats, because I, I don't have that kind of skills. But if you wanted to, you could continue on and keep folding and folding um, but I, I want to allow myself to have a little bit of room to um, make those shapes. Otherwise, it just gets way too difficult. Okay. Now, if you look inside here, the end, the shortest part, I don't know if you can see that, is right in here. There's all this extra fabric. You don't want your pattern to come past that, um, that line. So I'm going to take my washable marker just as a guide to sort of tell me like, don't, don't go any farther. So I'm just gonna, this is just to let me know, like you've reached your threshold. Otherwise, if I make a petal up here too much on part of it, it will be cut off and it just won't make sense. Okay, let's see what people are saying. If we already, if we have any questions, let's see, we've got, Linda, uh, Evil Lynn. Evil Lynn. Evil Lynn. So, Linda, I, I, I've i always had this curiosity about, so you spell Evil Lynn, L-Y-N. Do you spell Linda, L-Y-N-D-A, or do you spell it the traditional way, L-I-N-D-A? And, and then, do you... Do I call you Linda or do you want me to call you evil? Like, I don't, you know. I'd get my evil. So Lynette is asking you, Scott, what are you making? Did you hear me, Scott? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to make a center fold. Okay. Like a center burst kind of thing. Okay. I'm going to try. I'm try to. I can't seem to get it right sometimes so hi kathy i'm gonna, I'm kathy. gonna overcome sorry what what'd you say scott so i have a problem with them sometimes i'm gonna overcome it yeah you can do it i have complete faith in you so you'll take your time when adding your um ice and no troubles mm -hmm. So Kathy Greger is here. Kathy Greger is the wonderful woman that I buy all my special order dyes from over in the Facebook group, uh, the Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace. Uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, there is a link down below in the description box, which will take you right over there. And then if you want to buy small quantities of special order dyes, Kathy uh, Greger, she can totally hook you up. Okay, so evil, evil Lynn prefers to, for, to be called evil. All right, nice. so you nice. heard it here. So when you guys see me do replies on her lovely comments and I'm calling her evil, it's because she asked for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cody's here. Uh, hey, Cody. Yeah. Okay, now... So here's the thing. I am not good at mandalas at all. And I really struggle with how to start the center of my tapestry. I plan them out, accomplish them. I, like I said, I just wing it. So I'm going to use my wonderful sinew polar and matching caddy set from uh, boredomwithjen.com. Those of you that have not seen it, she completely uh, personalized it. It's got my logo on there and it's amazing. And this color, orange, it's got sparkles in it, you guys. It's amazing. Okay, <clears throat> so like when you watch Raya make her tapestry, she'll mark out. It doesn't matter how much I mark it out. It never, it, my, my sinew goes where it wants to. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try this one just as a, at an angle. Let's see. And it always takes me a second to get myself started because I'm left-handed and do I want to go this way or do I want to go that way? Uh, so let's see. Me too. Me too. 
So if I do it like this, but then I got to go that way. So it'd almost probably be easier if I started if I work my way down, down to the center. So I don't know, winging it. So let's see if I, maybe if I pinch it, but that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to give it a little pinch, kind of like a U shape, but this way. It, well, I think it'll do it to itself anyways when I pull on it. And I don't want to make the center too big, but then again, it's a tapestry, so it doesn't need to be too small either. So I like to wrap. Yeah, see, it's going to pull itself on its own up, so I might as well just tuck it. It might make it easier. So I wrap it around a couple times, two, three times. The sinew is like flat sinew, and for some reason, this particular strand is splitting. So I wrap it, you see, already my angle is disappearing. Oh, I suck at these. Okay, this is so hard to get started. So here, I will, I will draw a line so you can see what I'm trying to do and how much it doesn't end up doing it. So maybe if I do pleat, like if I do fold it, maybe it'll stay that way for me. We'll just try it in half. Okay. Well, I don't know. I'm just going to. This is why I desperately need a mandala um, lesson from a mandala pro because I, I, I just can't do it. I mean, I can. I'm going to. I'm going to try real hard, but okay. So I got it, I got it tightened down a little bit and I'm going to wrap it around a couple times and then really start to pull it tight. Oh man, I've got my space heater on in here and I'm roasting. Okay. Yeah, see, my line is this way, and my sinew is going in the complete opposite direction. I'm just, it is what it is. I'm going for it, you guys. And then I'm going to wrap it around a few more times and then pull it really tight. And I'm going to smash on it, smash it down, really pull it, pull it, pull it. Okay. Now I want this line to go the other direction. So here I'll draw another line just to show like what I'm attempting to do here. You have tweezers like that? Tweezers? Tweezers like that. What are like the tweezers oh. have like a little paddle on the front on the front of them? Oh I don't have those kind, no. Oh man, I tell you what, you can get right in your pleat and pull them right up. I got them in a kit, a tweezer kit. I've got the, like the, the ones that like the guys in the Philippine, Philipp, the Philippines use, um, this is not going to do it either. Um, they were like a three piece set. I don't use them very often though. Yeah. That's what I got these in. They were a three or five piece set. I would have gotten them at like uh, Michael's or uh, Hobby Lobby. One of the two. Oh, I know. I'm trying to go from underneath. Maybe if I go over the top. Ooh, let's try that. See if it works. Um, I've never been into a Hobby Lobby. I just found out we have one in Washington. I didn't even know it. I thought they were like a California or East Coast chain. I didn't even know they existed here. This is so terrible. So the one good thing, if I would have done this in a video, I could have like edited out all this fumbling that I'm doing. Like seriously, how in the heck do you guys make these mandalas? Like that's not, that can't be right, but I'm going for it. I'm doing it. It is what it is. Uh, 
I don't know. I wish I knew. I wish I could help you out. Well. But we'll learn them. Yeah. Well, you know, it, they're, they're just not, they're, I don't make them. And so, you, you, you know, if you don't, if you don't try, you don't learn. And right. I very rarely make tapestries. And it's the only time I try to make this sort of mandala center type stuff. So, you know, okay. I'm going to one more. I mean, it kind of looks right. It's got that little nub thing going on there. Okay, I'm going to go do one more. I don't know. It, it's going to turn out cool looking no matter what. I have faith. No, that's not going to work. Okay, now maybe I do need to go from this way, maybe. I know I'm making this way harder than it is. I mean, seriously, I, I, I know. I just know, but... There's got to be a way to make it not so difficult. Somebody come through and help this poor girl. Yeah, come do it for me, please. Okay. Uh, I'm down to my Samu. I don't know. That's not right because the, the sinew is not lining up. Oh, well, I'm just going to keep wrapping and wrapping until the sinew does line up. How about that? Well, <laughs> it is what it is. Okay, I'm just going to kind of backtrack myself down to where I started from and snip it and then move on to the flower petal part. And then I'm, I'm not sure what colors I should make this. You guys got any suggestions on what colors I should do? The last ones I've made have all been sort of like green and purple. I'd like to try something different this time. Okay. See, Lynette says, I feel the same way you do about trying to use sinew to make mandala stuff. That's why I just bought about 18 hemostats. I think that will come out more accurate for me. Uh, definitely, um, hemostat, uh, flower, mandalas, all that. Yeah, they're super easy to make. And they, they're, they're guaranteed to turn out. We'll have to do one of those on uh, one of the live streams one of these days. Yeah, I, I, have, uh, I have a bunch of hemostats, but they're kind of too big around at the tip. I don't really like them. I need some skinny ones. You got, they're big around the tip? Where the heck yeah, are my Yeah, they're, they're like big and round. But, I don't know. I'll get some. Oh, like the actual clamp part of it? Like yeah, the, the yeah. Of it? Yeah. yeah. Huh. I, I just had two pairs of scissors sitting here. And then... They have vanished. What in the actual world have I done? Oh, here they are over here. Of course, they're exactly where they're not supposed to be. Okay, moving on. Okay, well, I've got this thing, whatever whatever that is. It kind of looks like the start of a fun club, but... Okay, so now I'm just going to... It, it, if I mark them out, it doesn't matter. I have to let the fabric just tell me the way to go. 
Um, but I'm kind of, you know, the, the goal is to make, I'll draw it on there so you can have an idea of what, what I want to make. And then you'll see how it usually doesn't work out. So like, I want to make envision, you know, when you open it, it's double and you got like a flower petal, like kind of like a, like a water drop. So let's see, let's see if I can do it. And so it's, but it's, it's just like, just like with a t-shirt, you just pleat along that line. Best you can. The fabric is thick, so let's see, should I go this way? Yeah, see that it might be easier if I do it this way. I hope you guys can see. I've got it. I have my iPad set up so I can see what you guys see, but I'm on a 20 second delay. So if I'm completely out of the view, then I don't, I don't know. Let's see. So that is, it is kind of working easier for me if I go this way with it. And I've got all this fabric, so there's no reason to make tiny little itty bitty uh, flower petal shapes. Let's see if I can do this one. Is Scotty Thompson in the house? Is he? Did you say that earlier? No. Scott, or were you just no. talking about me? Chris, Crystal's here. Hi, Crystal. What did you just say, Scott? If Scotty Thompson was here? Yeah, no. I, I, if, if Scotty is here, I, I don't see. Maybe I, you were just talking about me. I don't see his That's name. Uh, Teresa says next tutorial, uh, um, a hemostat mandala. Well, with, with the whole, the plan is, this is impromptu. The plan is to go, um, to do a heart tutorial because Valentine's day is coming up. I got to get away from this nub a little bit. I got to get it to where I got something to tie off over here. But yes, we we will do we will do a hemostat mandala at some point. Okay, I think I can I can tie that off. So that's that's what I'm going with. So now I'm just going to take my sinew if I do, and get it up under there. And the sinew lines are what make, you know, the, like the flower petals start to show up. Like, you know, it um, makes the shape. And now this fabric is really, really thick with all those layers. So you really want to make sure you pull it as tight as you possibly can. So I just wrapped it around three times and pull it and then you can kind of feel you can feel the sinew start to grab on itself i'd like to check the back make sure it's lining up really really pull on it tight Let's see i need to i need i need to do something with that i feel like that's not going to quite work out okay I hope you guys are thinking about a color color scheme, like the flower petals and then the background. I was kind of feeling like doing like maybe like a royal blue type, you know, like the body of the tapestry and then maybe trying to do like fiery glowing type petals. 
kind of like when I make my glowing hearts. And that's kind of what I had in my mind because I don't know if a man's going to get this yeah. tapestry or a woman's going to get this tapestry. And so that way it's kind of universal color wise. Mm -hmm. This will be going into Greg's um, his giveaway. As soon as this is done, Greg, Greg hit that 1000. If you guys weren't here yet and he's, he's waiting on me to finish this tapestry so he can do his giveaway video. So, it's my fault that we're we're waiting. Okay, now I'm just really gonna thicken up this line and just pull it oh as tight as I can. Okay. All right, now I've got this floppy material here. I feel like I should have done something. So I think I might do is I think it's called like a Ron Starfold. I think I'm gonna I mean, maybe I shouldn't, but I feel like I should. I'm going to do something with it where you kind of fold it over and then anchor it down. I don't know if that'll work, though. Hmm. Maybe, maybe I'll try one more. I'm going to cut this off here. Try. I'm going to try. I'm just going to try one more. Um angle here like of the um the mandala you see what i mean about trying to make a, like an actual tutorial like when i'm all over the place like how do i explain this during voiceover work yeah it, it's impossible I once i get of, once i get better I'm at given a bunch of bad cheats to practice on i've yet to try yeah, I have some bed sheets that I got from Costco and I they're bamboo and I I haven't um I haven't I have not done a set of bed sheets yet. I'll tell you what guys, if you can figure out how to tie bed sheets, those things sell if they're if they turn out good, you can sell bed sheets for like 300 bucks if you guys are like into that. I mean, why wouldn't you be, right? <laughs> why not make money? Yeah. Okay. Well, in my mind, it was going to just tie up real easy right there. And I was just going to have another little nub, like no problem. And of course, it's not working. <laughs> Oh, and what's this? Oh, my other ones are coming undone. Sure. Great. You guys should get one. Well, I'm hating life right now. Guys, my other, my, my first ones that I tied are like quickly coming undone on me. What is happening here? Okay, that's one thing. You guys have heard me complain about this Treasure Gurus brand, uh, the brown sinew. I mean, I like it. It works, but at the same time, it's not very gooey and it does have a tendency to want to just do whatever it wants to do, which I don't like that. I really prefer Dharma's sinew because it's, it's super sticky. And it just could be Amazon, you know, like the stuff sits on Amazon shelf for a long time and Maybe should I just tie it straight? What would happen if I did that? Hey, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm winging it, whatever. I'm trying to make it at an angle, but if it doesn't, doesn't do it, then it might just be a circle. So okay. what colors do we use? What am I using? What colors do I want? Oh, yeah. What color, you guys, what color should Scott do on his shirt? Is it a man's shirt or a woman's shirt or unisex or what? Yeah, it's unisex. XL. It's an extra large. Hmm. Well, what do you have the most stock of? 
you know, um, like, you know, like, you, are you, are you fully stocked with a bunch of men's colors and need to go women's style or does it matter? No. Yeah. This ain't I mean, working. All colors, really, I mean. I'm giving up. I'm, I'm back in. Um, out of that method it wasn't working how easily i give up all right so what i just did there is i just took that and i folded it over it's because it's just like it's flapping in the wind for no reason i feel like it needs a line so i'm just going to tie that straight across right there that'll i know i can do a straight line um i don't know do you guys have any suggestions uh, Teresa says different than strawberry or stormy skies. And I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I, agree. I agree. I'd like, I'd like to see you kind of go like totally something totally different, but keeping in mind, it's a scent. It's like a center burst, you guys, or, you know, like kind of like a center burst. So, you know, what's going to look good glowing from the center out. There are so many happy cat dyes that no one ever uses, and they are so amazing. Um, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, dragon's egg. I can't, I need, the next time I do this, I need my glasses on. It's Mr. Cotrain, your friend. I mean, our friend. It's our tie dye buddy. Ah. He said he's he votes for Dragon's Egg, Dragon's which, is, which, which is a super duper cool name. So I could always do okay. So I have in my actual center part, I have an inch and a half, and then after that, every three inches, so I have five, five uh wraps of sinew or five different sections after the one and a half inch so uh why don't i do black? So let me well let, okay go ahead I, I was gonna i i'm i'm looking up here i'm reading what people are suggesting but okay okay be, well no i i think before i get you off your your uh your thought process no, I'm, I'm open to i'm open to so we're getting we're sure. getting black cherry and timber wolf pomegranate crystal says do pomegranate um oh it's cody cody i'm sorry cody cody is the one saying dragon's egg uh uh raya did one with black cherry and shiitake that looked so good with i don't if it said something else uh evil says do a dark rainbow Uh, Cody saying black cherry and shiitake. I don't know. Uh, we just did a shiitake. I don't. I, I would be surprised if Scott wants to do shiitake again. He just did one on our like last <laughs> live, right? You know what I'm saying? Like we kind of just did that. Um. So what were you? I'll what do... were you thinking? You were. I heard you say black. Yeah, I, I was going to think about doing. I was thinking about doing black on the sinew, under ice, and then something over the ice. Yeah? Which black? Because, you know, some go towards the red. I have all different kinds of black. I have, I have busted black, uh, better black, black 629, raisin. Ah! All right. I'm switching to a different sinew puller. This sinew is really pissing me off. Um, I did a shirt, to, my shirt that I did today had better black on it. And it's really pretty. It's kind of like a navy blue. Yeah. Uh, under ice. It's super pretty. Uh, okay. black cherry. Yeah. Black cherry on top. Um, okay. black, cher black cherry is gorgeous. Uh, I mean, black cherry is definitely one of my favorite ice dye colors, and it's black, dark. Okay, so we'll do black on the sinew lines underneath the ice, and then over the ice we'll do black cherry. Is that it? Yeah, yeah that'll be pretty. 
Okay. Uh, what? Janet, Janet what? says what? scarlet and blue green. That's like a Christmas shirt, <laughs> Janice. Scarlet and uh, blue green. Chili Fuego would look awesome with the black. Ka so Kathy, who sells our special order dye, I would yeah. definitely trust Kathy Greger's judgment, considering mm -hmm. that she, that's what she does is sell dye colors, you know? And what was her colors again? She said Chili Fuego. You might not have it. Do you have? No, the, I don't have. I don't have Chili Fuego. It's a really, really, really bright, like, you know, it, it sounds, it, it looks exactly like it sounds. Okay. Oh, yeah. That, this, this sinew is so much better. So this is the uh, uh, sinew kulai, kulai. I don't know how to say it. Uh, also from That's Amazon. Nice and gooey uh, and much, much better than this treasure gurus crap that I've just been fighting with for the last 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. I was just talking to one of my friends and he showed me a big spool of stuff that he uses and and he uses some serious new. He does a lot of sinew work and uh, he told me the name and I'll try to remember what it is. It was a, a it sounded like a lady's name, uh, like Erica or something. I can't I forget, but I'll have to ask him. He said it was really gooey and uh you don't have to wrap very many times. You can wrap a couple times, pull, and it cinches because it's so gooey. So I'll, yeah. I'll ask no, him, it's, and then I'll. It's I'll, all about all, all, all about the gooey for yeah. sure. Uh, let's see. I had some of that coulee and yeah. uh, on one and sent it to him, and he said that what he uses was way more gooey than what I had, and I felt like what I had was pretty gooey, so. I kind of, like you said, I kind of trust his judgment because he does that at all, every night, all night, you know? So exactly. I'll try to, I'll, I'll talk to him and uh, see what it is. And if he's in, uh, by right now, say. Um, Kathy Greger from Erica Millman. Yeah, uh, Erica. Yeah. Erica. Okay, so is there a black that I might have that splits into a red? Since I'm doing Ra black cherry. Raven. Raven, gotcha. Um, All right, Raven and black cherry. Raven under the ice and black cherry over the ice. Well. So uh, how you order from Kathy, you go and there's a link down below in the description box. It's on Facebook and it's Tie-Dye Supplies Marketplace. Um, and Kathy is fully stocked up and ready to go. Uh, and Kathy, if you're still here, correct me if I'm wrong, but she does her shipping on Mondays, you know, for obvious reasons, you know, you don't want her having to run out to the post office every single day, right? So if you want to get your order in, you know, plan ahead, think about what you want, and then know that she'll get it out on Monday. And then you'll, depending upon where you, you live, you'll have it, you know, shortly after that. So, yeah, Kathy's, Kathy's awesome. Okay, so moving on, wants to know, so all, all I did there, you guys, I just went from one nub, and now it's like, see, it's already kind of like pleated up. Now I'm just, I'm just going to go up and pleat around this line um how far can you squirt just spoon squirt what uh i uh not not very far i would have to say <laughs> i don't know <laughs> were we talking about squirting was oh are you being disgusting because like that's not cool um see yeah so yeah uh, Kathy you know su support uh, support small business for sure 
Um, so if, if you guys are unfamiliar with the special order dies and what I'm even talking about. So from Dharma Trading Company, they've got a special order die list. And you have to order at least five pounds or more to get it. And that's just a lot of dye. So Kathy buys those humongous containers and then she breaks it down into manageable sizes, like four ounces, eight ounces, so on, so that you're able to get the dye without having to buy, you know, five, 10 pounds of it. Cause that is just a lot of dye. So yeah, um, definitely support her. Um, she, she's my go-to. I used to get it from Kathy Sprague, but currently she's not, she's not selling it. Both Kathy's are wonderful. Kathy Sprague, um, got me hooked up with Kathy Greger. And then there are other people in there. So like if, if Kathy Greger doesn't have a color, you know, I'm sure she could help you get what you're looking, you know, tell you who, who to go to. So, and they do, there's more than dye being sold in that group. Um, I think, you know, it's all about, you know, like blanks and, um, you know, tie dye supplies, like it, like it says tie dye supplies marketplace. And please, you guys, if you go over there, you know, click the link when we're done here, go over and check it out and just please click follow because we have to support one another. Um, and um, also that way, if there's announcements or things like new colors or, you know, stuff like that, you won't miss out on anything. Oh, okay. Okay. What did you end up choosing, Scott? I chose Raven. So, so far we're at Raven. Yeah. Raven on the scenario. Melanie saying black cherry and raven. Uh, yeah, black cherry is super pretty, and it would look pretty with black. Uh, if you decided to like uh, break it up a little bit, like do black lines, and then you could go like every other, you know, every other one. Do like black cherry, and then you could do timber wolf on another because timber wolf black cherry just alone look absolutely gorgeous together, and it's you know kind of oh, okay. like kind of like yeah. a gray i mean you know what i mean yeah. you could you could get a little a little more adventurous and just do you know more than just two colors just for fun see what happens yeah. well what okay i'm curious who's getting blocked like what's going on you guys i'm trying to tie this tapestry and i'm struggling and what's happening somebody's like problem sounds like being a jerk Outside of YouTube, what social sites do you guys recommend for tie dye info and community Facebook? Um, well, I have a Facebook group, Belladonna Dyes Community Tie Dye Group, which I highly, highly recommend if you want to learn how to tie dye. The link is also down below in the description box to take you right over there, answer the questions, and it's a learning group. So if you share, you got to tell what you're up to. Um, and, and, and then if you just, if you go to Facebook and type in tie dye, um, it'll bring up groups. I mean, there's, there's, I think I'm up like maybe 11 groups I'm involved in so much information out there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely don't don't want any of that kind of nonsense in here. I mean, he did, he did end up asking about dye. I don't understand why, why it got weird. It was disgusting. I mean, maybe it was a liquid dye joke, but I don't know. It's, we don't, it's unnecessary, whatever. Yeah, I, mean, we're, I mean, we're all grown ups. We can handle it, but at the same time, like we're here to, her to be nice, not be disgusting. Oh, Try to un like cut your sinew before you try to throw your uh, puller in the basket because it doesn't work if it's still attached to your tapestry. So basically all I've got going here are just the center, which we'll see how that turns out. And then I've got the two nubs, which will be 
hopefully, you know, some type of a flower petal. And then this in the center will be like the body of it. And now at the end, I like to just, I like to go straight, straight up. Now you could scrunch this, you can pleat it. I like to go this way with it because when it opens up, it kind of makes, well, you'll see. It, I, it's hard to explain. It just makes a really, a really pretty pattern. I also like to do my long sleeves this way. It just gives like extra interest. Like, I wonder what would happen if I, could I get one more out of this? One small one? Do I dare? Oh, what do I do? What do I do? Let's see. Could I get another one out of this? That would be awesome. Well, maybe not. Eh, I'm going to call it good. So like I said, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to really simply just, like, I guess you call it accordion. Let's see. I want to go maybe that way with it. Let's see. If I did these more often, I think I'd be a lot quicker at them. Like with anything, you know, practice makes perfect. It's been months and it's since I made a tapestry. So Raya makes them look super simple. And they're not hard, you guys. Like I'm probably really making this look so scary and intimidating when it does not need to be at all. Okay, let's see. What are we saying here? Um, George says, I can't find a group of cool dyers who will show me the way. Well, you have now. Uh, you're, you're, you are in the coolest group of cool dyers right now, if you ask me. Um, Belladonna Dyes Community Tie Dye Group. Um, if you click the link down below when we're done here, you just got to answer the, you know, accept the rules, no spam, no being mean. Um, and, and it's a learning group. So, and then just subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm constantly doing videos. And then just type in tie dye into the search engine of YouTube. I mean, there's thousands upon thousands of tie-dye tutorials where people show exactly what they're doing. So, Jen is in the house. Hi, Jen. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay. The super friendly tie-dye group is also another great one for learning. Some of the group can be quite critical. But those two are awesome. Yeah, there are some groups that are super critical. I don't know. I'm not really liking the way that's going. But I keep starting over because it's like, I don't, I don't know. Okay, I just got to stop. The more I mess with it, the more annoyed I'm becoming. So, yeah, uh, the super duper friendly tie-dye group is a great group. Um not everybody will tell you what they're doing though. So, I mean, if you ask questions, don't be surprised if somebody doesn't want to tell you what colors they used or, I mean, and that's okay. So a lot of other groups um, don't have rules, you know, it's not required to say what you used. In my group, it's very specific. If you want to share in my group, you have to be prepared to explain how you did what you did. So... It's, it's to piggyback off of my channel. The whole point of why I created the group was because uh, on YouTube, you guys can't share your photographs. And so it was a way for me to be able to see, like when you guys copy one of my patterns that I do, I'm able to see how yours turns out. So I think I'm just gonna have to, I don't, I, but I want it to twist that way and not this way. Uh, you guys, why, oh, why? Donna, Texas Red, but this is the best tutorial that I have found. 
Well, thank you. Yes, live videos are a lot of fun. We're having a lot of fun. Because we can answer questions or I think I need to go straight up this. Yeah, I'm doing it wrong, you guys. I got to try to get right up that line. I, I feel like that's what I have to try to do here. Probably should have made that one so much bigger. I really... I don't want to untie it, though. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, here we go. So, uh, have, have we decided on Scott's uh, second color? He's got black down. Yeah, black and, and a black cherry. Raven and, and black you cherry. Are, you're, you are doing the black cherry, okay. Yeah. Gosh, I wish I would have yep. turned my heater off. I'm I'm actually sitting here sweating underneath my ring light. Ugh. And the stress this tapestry is causing me. Oh. Well, it's just not working. Okay. Now for the back part of it, uh, I'm not trying to create sinew lines, so I'm just gonna use rubber bands. And I just um all of my fav my second favorite rubber bands are piled up next to my sink. And so I'm just going to go here into my little miscellaneous mess jar here and try to find some rubber bands that work. The color color code LTD. Well, do you or what? Do you have a group? And I'm just not aware of like who you are. What? And I, I he says I will always gladly share my process and dyes used. I'm not about competition, but creating a community of amazing artists that help one another. Amen. Uh, that's that's how that's how I feel, and um, what what I have tried to do with. Belladonna Dyes Community Group. Oh, that's a good idea. So Melanie, Jen, I don't know if you're seeing her comment. Melanie says to create like half or full circles, but yeah, I mean, half circles of different diameter too that people can just trace out. Um, I mean, that's actually a good, I good idea. Uh, so yeah, I mean, um, but just on that note though, Melanie, you're not able to just tie a piece of kite string around it and just go in a circle. I mean, obviously you're not, or else you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be asking for tools if, but I just, I tie my kite string and I just whoosh. But yeah, Jen, I mean, that is a good idea. Some, some templates, circles, half circles, maybe stars, like for people that want to do like Captain America type shirts or whatever. You can, uh, breast cancer awareness ribbon templates. Or well, like, it doesn't have to be breast cancer. It could just be an awareness ribbon. Um, yeah, I have a cricket. I think that's how you say it. A cricket, cricket, cricket machine that I got for my birthday two years ago that I have not opened. Which, <laughs> um, because I know once I open that up, then, and then what am I going to be doing? Like just you know too many crafts all at once kind of a thing. Um, but you know, for those of you that have the creek cuts, I think you guys are able to make uh, templates, 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 however you say it. All right. Well, okay. So seriously, you guys, if this turns out, which I hope it does so far, I've been lucky. 
Um, that really is not that serious. I just made it look a thousand times harder than it actually is, like for real. But there's no way I could have explained all of that on voiceover. It would have been a terrible video, so we're just doing it this way. So, okay. And I, I keep peeking up at you. What are you, is that foil? What are you using? What is that, Scott? That's in the zone. Yeah, what, yeah, what is it? Cardboard? Uh, They're poly notebook. Oh. A polyethylene notebook for like schools. Got it. For, for kids, yeah. I just cut them off into. Because I keep, I keep popping up to see periodically what's going on while I'm fumbling around okay. over here. Let's see. I found them at the dollar store and we cut them up into. Yeah, uh, Jen, I, I do. I, I've got your, um, I have your box. It, 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 I just keep adding to it. And yes, I do. I do have a splatter guard that I will be sending you. Are you able to get clear filament? Like the key to it is you have to be able to see through it so you can see what you're doing. Otherwise, uh, it kind of defeats the purpose, you know? Um, let me see. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go grab some foil, you guys, because I, I need to make my ice barrier. So what I normally like to use, and you guys like to see, you know, that I always use my silicone cake molds. But if you look, it's just really not tall enough for me to get any ice in there. So I'm going to um, make my ice barrier out of foil. So I'll be right back. Scott, keep everybody occupied. I'll be right back. What's that? Huh. I have to go get foil to create my ice barrier. So okay. may maybe since I'm not uh, dominating the conversation, you can just talk, like explain what you're doing. Uh, okay. Well, what I did was do a uh, center fold or a center burst, um, folded it up. I sinewed my first line at an inch and a half three inches to when I and over top of that ice I'm going to use uh, Dharma's black cherry And hopefully it looks cool. Um, this should. This should look cool. I hope. So I need to get some ice myself. Let's see. I don't know if I can see any questions or anything. Raven will split in the red and then we'll hit with my black cherry. It should be all right. It should look pretty good. You back, Steph? Okay. So, Jen, if you're still here, here's your box. Like I said, I've just been adding stuff to it but your splatter guard is right here and I got some stuff from dollar store and I got some special dyes and stuff oops and I'm collecting all your papers and your bags and all your good stuff so I got you hooked up I've been working on uh, your shirt and John's shirt Okay, so I'm going to set this off to the side. So for the tapestry, I'm going to dye it on a rack. But now, like I said, I've got to create my ice barrier. So I'm going to set this off to the side. 
And I like to get the stuff from uh, Costco because it's heavy duty. But if you don't have Costco, then you can go like get for foil. The he the heavier, the better because it, it stands up better. And I just pull out really long pieces. You could also use cardboard, but I don't have any cardboard. And then I just kind of fold it into thirds because I want it nice and tall so I can really add a lot of ice. Um, good luck, Erin. Uh, I, I got the splatter guards from Amazon way back when. Um, it, it's the Nordic Wear brand. So if you Google Nordic Wear microwave splatter guard, a uh, deluxe, it has to be deluxe. So it's spelled D E L U X E. Um, they have just continued it. They are no longer making them. So the chances of finding them are becoming slim to none. Um, so um, I have links in my tutorials, but they don't work anymore. So I'm sorry about that, hon. Uh, yeah, you can look on Walmart. I have gotten them there, but um, they are now starting to send them out without the hole on top. They don't even care. They don't even, they just, they just send, they don't care. Before I pull another piece out, I'm going to see if I can get this to fit. But I'll tell you, anything can work, you guys. Uh, I've seen people take, well, Amanda, Amanda just showed me a, like a clear picnic plate that she had her dad uh, drill a hole in the center. And um, and then, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I forgot who sent me. If you're in here, speak up. At the dollar store, they have a, like a 12 or 13 inch diameter clear plate also. And if you just cut a hole in it, I've also seen people take the handle off their clear, like boiling pots and use that. Any, anything, anything that uh, it just has a little bit of weight that you can see through will work. Um, or yeah, you know, I've even seen people like take the tops like these. Um, This is not big enough, but this is the Betty Crocker from the dollar store. You cut a little hole in the top. You know, it's better than nothing. I mean, it's not that much smaller than my splatter guard. I mean, actually, it's basically is the same size as my splatter guard. What am I talking about? So, I mean, just cut a hole in the top of one of these lids and it should work. Anything that can just hold your pleats down, really. This just has a little bit of weight to it, so it makes it a, a good tool. Okay, I got my ice on. I think I'm ready to do die over ice now. I'm gonna put my ice up there. Yeah, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be really pretty because the uh, the the raven will have like yellows and blues and but it leans more towards the red. It will act, you know now I told you to go with raven. I, if you just bought your raven, it might lean more towards blue just because that's how the batch is right now. Um, but yeah. with black cherry, it'll it'll still be beautiful. Right. So hey, I'm gonna be able to get away with it, you guys. So my nub down here is real small, so I'm gonna be able to attach uh, the cake molds. Yay. Okay. So. I need to some get this up elevated, so I'm going to use one of my foil pans from the dollar store. Um, they leak after a couple uses, you guys, so make sure that you always put something, put the whole project down inside something else. Oh, I should tie up a spiral really quick and throw it down in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I've been really loving the twofers, you guys. 
get get on with it. If you haven't made yourself a twofer, do it. They are turning out amazing. Why is this? They usually fit perfectly on this rack, but this one's not wanting to, but I'm going to make it fit. Okay. So I've got my foil and see it's nice and heavy duty, so it's going to hold up, but you got to attach it to the rack somehow. Um, you know, so I like to use clothes pins and I, and I like to go, I try to follow the pattern and get, I really try to get in there and I have chopsticks, the freebie chopsticks. And I kind of really mash the foil in there because I, if I want to make this, let's say this, I want to make this uh, orange and I want to make the rest blue. I, I want to try my hardest to keep the orange and the blue from touching each other best I can. So I'm going to get in there with my clothespin. I'm going to put my eyes up. Floor. Really get in there. Okay. See what Scott's doing, you guys? He's keeping notes. He's he's writing out what he's what he's doing so he can keep track. I recommend you guys see I make videos, so I have the ability to go back and see what I'm doing, but Take pictures, get your cell phone out, take pictures of what you're doing because, you know, I, as much as you try to remember your dye placement or what colors you used, I promise you, if you make two or three projects by morning, you'll go, wait a minute, what did I do? Yep, that's what I'm doing now. I wrote center live, raven under, cherry over. And then yep. uh, today is uh, Tuesday night. Today is Tuesday, yes, sir. Uh, so I'll do it Friday morning. I can all rent out. So let's see. So Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday, some point. Yeah, Friday night, Friday afternoon. I mean, it's it's arbitrary. I just you know I try to go for the forty eight hours, but like if my day happens to fall where I don't want to be rinsing. Like this, if I don't want to rinse this tapestry, you know, at nine o'clock on Friday, I, I might rinse it in the afternoon or I'll just wait till Saturday morning or as long as it has a good solid 24 hours at 70 degrees or higher. But you guys know me, the longer, the better. And it's mostly just because I'm lazy. Well, like, and it's easier to rinse out. It truly is. Well, well, I mean, meaning waiting so long, like it's, you know, yes, it is easier yeah. to wait, but like, I try to go for the full 48, but I also try to accommodate my personal life. Like, you know, if I'm yeah. tired, I'll let it go 72 hours. If, if I can't, if I can't let it go for the full 48, because I won't be here, I'll be away from the dye room, then I'll, you know, I'll pull it at 36. So I do the best I can. That's all you can do. Just do the best you can. Okay. Now, down here, I've got this little nub area, and it's short enough to where I can wrap uh, cake mold around it. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I did put my mask back on, too, before I start doing this. Yeah, always wear your protective... Wear your protective gear when working with your dyes and your um, soda ash. For me, especially, I have to with soda ash. It, it really it really affects my, um, my nose badly. Um, the dye doesn't, it doesn't bother me, but... You know, that's everybody's, everybody's the different. I have asthma, so wearing masks, it's hard for me. Um, I struggle to breathe as it is, so. But yeah, protect yourself at all times. Okay. Now, for me, this is the hard part, trying to decide what colors to do. Let's see, I'll put this around here like that. 
And for mine, I am going to try to do dye over ice, I think. Okay. So I was saying for mine, I think the body of it, like blues and purples and then the nubs, I don't know. Part of me really, I've never done it before. So part of me wants to do like the glowing nubs, but then part of me says go safe and do, you know, light blue. Yeah. I don't know. Playing it safe. Safe is always good, but it's boring. Okay. So clothespins and paper clips and stuff like that are, are your friend. See, I just, I don't, yeah. I don't want a big, tall clothespin right there. I just need a little something to kind of bind it all together. So dollar store paper clips, just stick it down in there. Easy peasy. Okay. Okay, so I, let's see, I'm gonna put another one right here. Maybe put another one right over here, just to keep it nice and secure. Yeah, that's pretty good. I just sprinkled uh, some globber salt on there for somebody or because that's this is my soda ash that I'm putting on, but I sprinkled some globber salt on it. Kind of helped the color stick a little better, especially in the colder temperatures. Okay, yeah. So the globber salt, you and I were talking about that, and uh, I did my uh, I did another spicy plum, and so I did my regular way, put the dye down, did the soda ash, put the ice over top, and then I considered doing the the um, I considered doing my globber salt, but then I started thinking about, you know how like when we have ice in snow and we put salt down and how it melts the ice? Yeah. Do you, does it, does, do you feel like the salt makes your ice melt faster? I'm just curious because I have never used this yet. So. Yeah. It, 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 but I'm using different ice now. Let me take my mask off. I'm done with, with all that. Um, I, uh, oh yeah, your ice. Talk about your, yeah, I'm using different ice now. So, um, it's still kind of an experiment for me, you know, so, but I'm loving the chunky, I'm loving the cubed ice because since I'm an ice dyer, I've already did ice experiments, uh, because I'll, sometimes I'll, triple bag it and pulverize it and kind of turn it into packed ice kind of or packed like shaved ice like snow uh, kind of right yeah kind of like kind of like snow yeah yeah real heavy snow and uh use it and you get a different way different look than what you get if you use cubes completely different look so i'm really liking the cubes you get a lot more splits with the cubes than you do with snow or well yeah for your diet yeah for your dye over ice for sure yeah. you fill yeah. with the nooks and crannies um, i mean i'm telling you you should see the splits in this already i mean it's crazy looking let me see yeah no, a bl black cherry is beautiful because it's got that really nice, well, black cherry look. Uh, well, uh, it's like I, I, I desperately want to show you black cherry, but if I show the shirt, nobody will watch the tutorial. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Okay, so for my glowing centers, I'm going to do golden yellow, and then I need a like a bright yellow for the center center and then oh let's see what to do what to do what red what red what red fire red maybe um 
Jungle red is beautiful. Fire red is sure lovely. I'm not really happy with their atomic fireball, you guys. I think it's kind of ugly. Um, let's see. Scarlet. Oh, Pagoda, no way. Um, where is my fire red? Fire red, where are you? Did I pull it out? No. Uh oh. Am I out of fire red? I never use red. How can I be out? All right. Bear with me, guys. Um, surely I've got to have fire red. <sighs> Every color known to man, but no fire red. What's going on here? Huh. Where is it? Chinese. Oh, Chinese red. Chinese red will be a good red. I'll do Chinese. Yeah, I did. I can't because I, for the life of me, cannot find my fire red, which means I'm out of it. I mean, I'm no, not. I'm not. I got a box I across the box. full of dyes, but then I'd have to go all the way through my. Oh, well, what is that one I just did? But it, ooh, uh, that special order Dharma red, that, the one they did for the holiday, hol holidays, holidays. Uh... Uh, what was it? Yeah, uh, Atomic Fireball. It's it doesn't split. It doesn't do anything, and it's. I mean, it's it's good because it doesn't split. But yeah, uh, they they could really actually take that off their list and do something else with it because it's it's terrible. Um, oh. have you used Atomic Fireball yet, Scott? No. Yeah, I have a. What am I? fourth of july shirts i did it with that and their houdini blue and uh or was it houdini blue anyways they, the new blue and the new red they made for fourth of july and really both colors are just kind of like me whatever not not feeling it yeah. okay now for the body i think i want to do blue and obviously uh cerulean blue is beautiful um, and then Bluebird is really pretty, but it's just, they don't split. Like they just, they're just blue. Um, and none of the blues really, really, really split. They're, they're all pretty true. Yeah. So I don't now, know. But I want to think, uh, and Blueberry's more sorry. like navy. I don't want to do that. Huh? You think I should uh, incline that just a little bit? Yours? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Incline just a little bit. Just a little, just okay. to get just to get a little bit of the flow for sure. I totally would. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Just I'll do that. I mean, you could do a drastic one, and it would. I mean, either way, it's going to be beautiful. But I would definitely. So yeah, so like Bluebird is fantastic. It's so dominating though, like it just it takes over everything. Um Okay, blues. Let's see. Yeah, Dances with Raisins is that would that would also be very pretty. I just did a Dances with Raisins. So you guys, I'm back into making swatch shirts for the playlist, the, the single color ice dyes. And I cannot tell you how happy I am to be getting out of the reds and away, like the reds split down into that rust orange color. I am so thankful to start seeing splits other than rust. I beg you guys, I know you know what these colors look like, but please give them views. You know, when the videos only get 200 views, then my whole channel crashes. 
Um, and there's, I'm so excited. We're getting into the purples. I just did, uh, oh my God, it's so pretty. It's the, the, fir the first one in the pinks. It's a uh, sweet pea. I think it was sweet pea. That shirt. Oh, it's so, I want to, I just want to show you the shirt right now. But like I said, if I show it to you guys, you won't watch the video. Okay. Um, yeah, Roy Royal Blue. Royal Blue is very beautiful. I did pull that out. I've got it here. So for the back half, I want to stripe it. So I'm, I want to do like, I've also pulled out Electric Blue. Um, maybe maybe some purple. Some uh, would like plum and like plum and glacier blue, maybe. Glacier blue or ice blue. Or both baby blue. I've got I have them all. Brilliant blue, azure blue. I don't know. A cerulean blue is super pretty, but I think bluebird is a lot prettier. But maybe I should do cerulean because bluebird is such a beast. Like it annihilates every it will eat the entire project and the whole thing will turn out blue. I maybe I should do cerulean. Huh? I don't have that color. Oh, it's it's gorgeous. So like when they couldn't get cerulean blue during COVID, um, like I guess a factory exploded overseas or something, it, unstable chemicals, and so they couldn't get cerulean blue and make it anymore. So they made bluebird as an alternative, and like a little goes a long way. It's a gorgeous, perfect shade of primary color blue, but. I mean, it swallows, just like um, deep orange will swallow everything around it. Bluebird, yes. it's a beast of a color, but it's gorgeous. Um, Scott, which one were you saying the light blues that you really like to ice dye with? Like, oh, we're like Robin's egg blue, but I'm not. Glacier. I don't want to use that. It's the I like glacier. glacier. Yeah, yeah, I think I, it's okay. just like one or two steps up. It's really okay. close to color. So I'm, I think I'm going to do glacier blue, cerulean blue on the back. So I'm going to do down the body of it. I'm going to do like the dark, like the cerulean blue, and it's going to come up and then it's going to stripe off into uh, glacier blue stripes. And then at the end, I could finish back with cerulean blue. But I feel like maybe doing a, a navy blue or a purple. What do you guys think? Um, yeah, ice, please. You know, I, I'm gonna get to the ice. I just, the first, I gotta get to the tie. <laughs> first, I gotta pick out my dye colors. So, I mean, one, one thing at a time, I'm getting there. Uh, and I can tell you for uh, just so you know, um, it, like if you have to go, this live will go to a video and you could always come back and finish it off at a later time. Just as an FYI, because I know it is getting really late. <clears throat> All right, let me go collect some ice. <clears throat> okay, so I've got some ice and now I'm going to be doing Die over ice. So I need to map myself out here. So down in the center, I guess I'm going to just, I'm going to try to do the center. Gosh, should I do the mandala type part in like the light blues or should I go with the glowing yellow and golden yellow and red? And then I don't know what to do. Maybe I should do that part different. Like I, in the glacier blue. See, this is the this is the fun part, but also the hard part. Like, what to do? What to do? What to do? No, no, it, it's fine. I, I understand. Oh, ice blue. Yeah. Okay. No, I got gotcha. you. I'm like, I'm getting there. I promise. I'm trying to hurry, but I'm also trying to think out loud. Yeah. So yeah, I 
Ice blue is also beautiful. I do like ice blue and I love the glacier blue and I love um, Robin's egg blue, but Robin's egg blue does not ice dye very well. And it's kind of, I don't know. It's very pretty, but it's, I want this to be more just like a, like an icy blue and glacier blue is the perfect ice dye blue for this particular project for sure. So I'm going to do glacier blue, cerulean blue. And then on the very ends though, did anybody say, okay, purple, uh, lavender or ultraviolet? Um, Ooh, do you think that, okay, wait, Oh, now I'm like rethinking the whole thing. Instead of doing fire nubs, maybe I should do lavender nubs. See, you think too long, you guys. I get off track here. Um, all right, let's take a quick vote. Should I make the flower petals be like glowing red, like my hearts that I make, or should I do them like purples and lavenders, which I know will look gorgeous? Somebody said lime pop earlier, but I my last tapestry was lime pop and purple, so I don't want to do that one again. Hydrangea. Yeah. All right. I'm not doing red on this one. I've changed my mind. I've scared myself out of it. Okay. Just so happens I was going to do a uh, scrunch with these colors. So I've got hydrangea. Do I have enough of it though is the thing. Yeah. So like I'll do hydrangea and wisteria for the flowers, at least on one of them. And then I'll do glacier blue and, okay, so this flower I'm gonna make purple. And then what, what, what should I do for the other flower? Um, like orchid and like deep purple. Oh, that would be pretty. Or plum. Let's see, where's my plum? Hey, you guys, is, is Snoz very pretty? I can't remember what Snoz, oh God, look at that shirt. That's gorgeous. I, is that moose? It's, I think that's um, moose. No? It's moose and palomino gold. Yeah, that together. turned out. That turned out really, really pretty. Oh, yeah, Power Berry. That's a pretty one. And then the Power Berry would also look good with the blue. So I'll do like Power Berry and... Power Berry and Orchid. And maybe uh, instead of Wisteria, maybe... Uh, how about... Plum, would plum and hydrangea look good together? Let's see, where's my plum? Plum, plum, plum. Okay. So let's see. I'll try plum and hydrangea for one and power berry and orchid for another. And then, uh, Glacier blue, cerulean blue, and then I'll come off to the ends like with some plum. Okay, I got it. We're doing a blue and purple tapestry, and hopefully one of you viewers will be the lucky winners. Oh, and I was curious about cornflower blue. You know, cornflower blue is one of those holidays, and I haven't really used it much for an ice dye. I wonder, so maybe I'll do some cornflower blue. Some bluebird. No, no, get rid of the bluebird. That's too blue. Cornflower blue, cerulean blue, glacier blue, and maybe some plum. Okay, I think I got plum. it. Yeah, I love plum. Is plum is like my favorite. Okay, so now you got to put your your project down inside something because these leak. All right, here we go. So and I wanna do, I think I wanna do dye. Well, I think maybe for the center part, because I can't, don't have any control, I'll do dye under eyes for that part. 
And Jen, all of my spoons are in the sink from projects, so I'm going to use my uh, my picnic spoons. Okay, so here we go. So for the nub, I'm going to do. I'm going to go with glacier blue at the very, very center because I want the very center of the tapestry to have a glowing look. I can't see. Let's see here. Yeah. Oh, wear gloves, you guys. Wear, wear gloves. I, I missed, I, I, a little, 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 I missed everything that you were showing, Scott, because I had my back to the table picking out colors. I saw that last one you did with the Palomino gold and yeah. um, moose. You said it was moose, yeah. right? Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, moose and Palomino gold. I love Palomino gold. Palomino gold is one of my favorite highlight colors. I use it a lot, and I especially love it when um, with blues. I just got it, and I think you probably recommended it to me. I think well, actually, I, I, know, I know you did. I, I think I down. sure did because I remember. Yep. I remember telling you. Yeah, yeah. I wrote it down on the dry erase when I think of colors I need, I can just write it down on my dry erase board and order it and then write it off. Okay, so I did... Start over. If I see something I'm getting low on, I can... Okay, so I, um, I did glacier blue and now I'm going to go into cornflower blue and I'm really not exactly sure, so I'm going to put a little piece of ice down here on my napkin because I don't exactly know what color this is. I mean, obviously it's blue and I know what cornflower blue, the flower is. It's kind of a really beautiful electric color. Um, but as far as how it's going to split on this tapestry, I don't know. And this might be way too dark for down in here, but I'm going for it. If it doesn't turn out pretty, I'm going to blame all of you. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's all you have to do is ask or call her what, what the colors they want. <laughs> I'm, I'm obviously just kidding. Okay. And then um, where the glacier blue and the cornflower blue are meeting, I'm sort of overlapping them a little bit. So they kind of take on, oh, cornflower blue is actually quite dominating as far as a blue goes. And I was not, I thought it was going to be a lot lighter. Let me show you. It's, um, it, it has a lean towards like a lilac. I can see that in there, but it's, it's a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. Oh, well, pretty, pretty, pretty. Ooh, lilac on this would be pretty too. Okay. Now for this first one, since I'm going with blue here, I'm going to come up over here and go with purples. So what did I say I was doing from here? Let's see. Let me get this out of the way. Where did I put the lid? Okay, so then I said I was going to do hydrangea and plum, right? And then I would said orchid and, wait a minute, no, powerberry. Oh, I don't remember now. Powerberry is really super dark purple, but it splits down into a really pretty navy blue. I'm starting to wonder if that's going to be too dark, but it really is gorgeous. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, moose is a Dharma dye and it's one of their special order dyes. It was a, it was a zombie dye and Kathy Greger has it. So you can get it for sure. And it's really super pretty. It's a, it's, it's a funky color. Like it's chocolate brown and green, like lime pop and it splits really oh. super pretty. Uh, Lila, if you go if you go into my videos, I did zombie dye. I just swatched them out real quick as uh, scrunch dyes, watercolor dyes, and so you can see exactly what it looks like. It's it yeah, purple. Like it's like it's not it's like a chocolate per it's purple chocolate. It's 
it's really awesome. Okay, so um, I'm gonna come, that's dark blue. So I don't wanna go super dark. So I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna start on this one. I'm gonna go with the plum. So this is my, oh wait, and I said, nah, I'm just gonna do dye under eyes. I, I know I can trust it. Whoa, I got things falling behind me. So I'm gonna try to make a glowing flower here. So um, close to the sinew line, I'm gonna go with the darkest color and then towards the end, the tip, I'm gonna add my lighter purple so that when it's open, hopefully it'll have the appearance of like a glowing flower petal. I've done this with all the other tap. Oh, and, and yeah, or don't spill it everywhere. But I've done this with the other tapestries in the past, and it it gets really like a really pretty. You could just go all one color, but it gives a really pretty effect by kind of layering. And I can't see what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep my head out of the way, but I gotta. I have to bend over, guys, to see what's going on here. Okay, so I'm going with the uh, plum, and this is such so many thick layers of fabric. I'm I'm adding the dye pretty heavy because I have no intention of flipping this. There will be no flipping involved of this tapestry. Okay, and then so if I'm doing plum there, and I want to have a glowing center. Do I want to do, I could do plum, I could do orchid. Orchid's pretty dark. I could do, uh, ooh, plum blossom. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> plum blossom, where are you? Please tell me I'm not out of plum blossom. Because if I don't have it in my drawer, I will go break out the, uh, the box. I've got a box of everything. Let's see. I just did it. Who was, there it is. Plum Blossom. No, that's Sweet Pea. But you know what? I'm going to do Sweet Pea. I'm going to do Sweet Pea right next to my plum. Look at how pretty that is in liquid. It's just the prettiest soft lavender pink. And this is the one I just did for the single color eye dye, you guys. And it is uh, gorgeous. Okay, so plum and sweet pea, they're both like flower names. And sweet pea has a little bit of some like blues in it, kind of. So it'll go with the corn flower. Like we're all, we're doing um, flowery names. And I'm overlapping as well because I, I want it to have kind of a blend. And I'm, sweet pea does not die well, so I'm, I'm going real heavy. Okay. I mean, it, it dyes well, but it's one of those fine powders that has a tendency to want to vanish. Okay, now what did we say we're doing on the other flower? Uh, oh, powerberry. I'm really second guessing Power Bear, you guys, because it's super beautiful, but I, it, it is such a navy blue split. And I'm doing blue. I'm gonna, I have to think about that a little bit longer, you guys. Power, I, it's, it, Power Berry is an absolutely stunning color, but I'm just, I'm scared. I'm scared that against the blue, it's not gonna show up uh, bright enough. I'm gonna stay in my comfort zone. Ooh, do I have enough? Well, I'm doing it. I'm going to go orchid and wisteria on the other flower. Same thing. Up against my sinew line, I'm um, going to be doing the orchid, which is not a very dark. Ooh, lilac also would have been really pretty, but I've already done lilac too much on these tapestries. Um, orchid is a really pretty, it's kind of dark. It, but it leans towards the blues. And I cannot wait to get to the single color ice dye with these purple dyes, you guys. I'm like, I'm actually motivated to get them done. What are you working on there? Oh, a spiral. Hey, is that a spiral you're making? Yeah, it is. You could throw that down in the bottom of your black cherry and black. I bet that would be a cool looking twofer. Yeah, absolutely.
I got a twofer going on right now with um, the, uh, I might've already said this, but the twofer, I have a twofer going on with the uh, spicy plum I just did. Uh, I'm making a video for it. So that'll, you know, you guys will see it in a couple of weeks, but I'm curious to see how the twofer will split because it has all that green in it. How, how the twofer, will it have any green in it? I'm, I'm, I'm super curious. And then uh, for the center of the orchid, I'm going to go with wisteria. And wisteria is a very, very, very soft, uh, light, very pale uh, purple. And I'm also going really like crazy heavy because it, it's, it's, it's a vanisher for sure. And I'm overlapping. Okay. And I don't think I'm going to use the uh, wisteria again. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the lid on it. So you guys make sure you always, always find the proper lid and match it up. If you write on like I do so many times I've, put the wrong lid on the jar, grab it up and then start adding my dye and it's, it's wrong. And then there goes your, your whole project. Okay. Now for the body of it, we're going to do the, um, I've got Royal blue, but how much I don't, I mean, I have enough. Okay, <clears throat> what, royal blue or cerulean blue? Who for you guys that are still here? Like for the for the main coming off the flowers, like down the very center of it, royal blue or cerulean blue? You guys have an opinion on this one? <clears throat> Let's see, Teresa. What I stage my tape would be stuck seven ways to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I've not tried the tape method. Um, there's just no way. <clears throat> oh, it's, it's pretty easy, really. And Teresa's asking, <laughs> Scott, please do a pleading video on your channel. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I, please, they're asking you to please do a pleading video on, on your channel. I, yeah, I mean, I think when Scott really begins to build his channel right now, oh, I, I can't talk for you, but I, I can, I, from what, from what I think, I don't think YouTube is his priority, like right now. Um, but when he does, I mean, yeah, look out, he's going to be making all kinds of cool stuff. Okay, Royal, if I want splits, Cerulean, if you don't, I want, I kind of want the splits, but... Cerulean is winning out here. Cerulean, 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 Cerulean. Yep. Okay. Cerulean it is. It's winning out. So now this is the body of the tapestry. So I'm going to bring it up. Up through the center here. Now this I could actually do dye over ice, but I'm not. I'm just going to. I'm going to tap it on and I'm going to try not to put it over my um, sinew because I, I just, I don't, I want to have white lines. I don't want to dominate my flowers. Hopefully they're going to look like flower petals. Um, so I, I'm going to try to just stay back a little bit from the sinew line and let it kind of creep in and do its thing. So, um, yeah, Scott, do you want to answer that question about your YouTube channel? And so I'm not just like talking for you. They want they want <laughs> they they want pleading videos, but I you know I think I think right now just like what trying, kind of pleading videos? Well, it's you like know what actual, they like, you know what they want. They want a tutorial. I, I know I'm dancing around, but you know. So have you decided, know. have you settled in on if you're doing an Etsy or an actual website or anything yet? Have you, have you given more thought to any of that? Scott? Um, a little, I've given it a little thought Yeah. about what I want to do and what I can do, what I have to offer. 
Well, yeah, I, I mean, well, I mean, I'm I'm trying to like promote you here as to where maybe in the future people can start thinking about where they can maybe, you know, buy buy your art. You know, yeah. if you're so I guess I guess stay tuned, you guys. And obviously uh, Scott will make an announcement, but, you know, he's considering uh, opening up and maybe getting a, a website where things can be purchased and, but things are for sale right now. If you want to buy Scott's art, you guys go to, um, well, tell, tell them where they can find you. You, you tell them. Uh, you can find me on, uh, rad dies, uh, on Facebook. That's my bit, like my business page. Uh, my personal page is Scott rad dies Walker. Um, Instagram is, uh, rad dies WV. Uh, for West Virginia, Rad Dice, West Virginia. Um, I'm s starting to get my Etsy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, Scott, uh, Yeah, I'm ha I'm having a blast. No, I was just gonna say Scott Scott does uh, like special orders. So when I say special orders, meaning you know not you can't like text him and say plead it this way, plead it that way, do what I say. But like if you know you're like, hey, I love that style of shirt I saw you make. Can you make me a blue one? He he sure. he says that he works pretty good under pressure. You know, so if you see some of his work, but you haven't seen it in the colors that you want, you know, reach out to him now and yes, you know, maybe, maybe he can make something for you um, yeah, in the meantime. Doing, uh, yeah, do dresses and uh, uh, got some uh, tunics from Dharma. Those are real nice. Kelly loves hers. Um, yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to get more into female. Uh, because uh, there's just there yeah. seems to be more females that follow follow me than men, you know. So I need to cater to females. Like yesterday, I had uh, I did nothing but women. So I just called yesterday at Rad Dies Ladies Night because that's all I did was women. <laughs> ladies Night, you know, feeling right. You ladies Night, you, you know. Well, I think uh, you know. Look. I think it's easy to that, get stuck in that rut, and I need to get out of it. You know? Well, I think ice the the look of ice dye has a feminine feel to it. Sure, absolutely um, it does. I uh, agree. But but that doesn't mean guys can't wear ice dyes because uh, ice dyes are just killer. Doesn't matter, whatever. But. You know, I, I'm an ice dyer and, I, and I'm also female and I just feel like it just has a, a femme thing. I don't make I don't make much guy stuff like I'm all about purples and pinks and and I need I need to do like what you did. I need to try to make like this is going to be guys night and use browns and grays and greens and, you know, get out of my pinks and yeah. try try to stretch my horizons a little bit. Um, <laughs> totally for sure. And also I, I, I need to start getting busy and trying to make some stuff and get my, get my Etsy built up because, um, I know, I know people, people would probably like to, you know, own a Belladonna shirt. Oh, I just, yeah. I'm just some super, I'm super busy in my real life. And so it's, it's just hard to do all of this by myself with no help and, and oh, then yeah. make it and then get it up on a website. And, you know, I, I just, at the end of the day, like I, I run out of abilities. So, so yeah, so stay tuned. Scott and I are trying to help motivate each other to broaden our horizons just a little bit. And, and then, you know, these live videos have been very helpful. I'm dying more, you know, the last couple weeks than I have in months. 
Um, so I appreciate everybody that hangs out and tunes in and, you know, and I, and I hope we're also motivating you to grab a shirt and try something that you've never tried before. Like, like I said, is, is, I made this tapestry look terribly difficult, but please go grab yourself a $15 tapestry and just go for it and see what happens. And then once you open it up, you'll be like, oh my gosh, that was... That was not as hard as she made it look. <laughs> I need to, I need to, like I said, I got some bed sheets uh, given to me, eight of them, and I need to work on those and, and practice, practice on them, you know. And I honestly, I'm kind of petrified to even get into them, and I don't even know why, you know. It, I mean, there's a lot of fabric there, and it's very intimidating, you know. Um, so... I need to just push myself, maybe just do that tomorrow during the day, you know, when I get up. I, I agree 100, I, but I mean, I really, I, I agree 100%. Uh, I waited forever to do my first geode. I mean, I waited a year. You guys have heard the story. Yeah. Me private messaging Angie all the time going, I'm so scared. Um, and then I made one. It was yeah. like. What have I been waiting for? Now I can't stop making them. Yes. I'm obsessed. Okay, so I did yeah. the I did the cerulean blue up the center, then I did the glacier blue. Now I'm thinking, should I pull from the beginning? I don't even remember what I put at the beginning now. Oh, I did the glacier blue. Should I maybe pull like the purple? Or how about, oh, look at the ice melted on the um, the uh, cornflower blue, you guys. Look at how beautiful that is. I mean, that, it reminds me a lot. So like a dupe for this color right now in this state is azure blue. It's it's very azure blue color. Very beautiful. Um, highly concentrated and no splits on that paper towel. So, I mean, that might be pretty to bring... The cornflower blue up next to this is a bright, bright blue, or I could totally mess the whole thing up and the stripes look crazy. Maybe do plum and then, so try to imagine it. Like when it's pulled open, it's gonna have a center line of cerulean blue, then stripes of the ice blue, and then it's gonna come off into the other colors. And that'll be like the very end of the tapestry. I feel like I want to finish off with plum. What do I do in the middle? Well, let's just put some plum down on the ends here. See, this is so much fun. I'd rather die like this all the time. Dying all by myself. <laughs> when I'm all by myself, I'm making videos and then I'm editing them all by myself. I don't get to talk to anybody and I'm just by myself. It's lonely. This is so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. You think out loud and get a little feedback. That's nice too. You just have to perform. You have to perform your folds and stuff. That's the thing. Well, yeah, which that can be terrifying. But I'm getting really comfortable now. I don't. I don't feel. Scared. I am too. My first. I'm telling you, my. my my first time, I don't re really remember centering my shirt. I was so nervous. I know. Like, I remember the the tail end of centering my shirt. I don't really remember anything before. I was. I was so <laughs> nervous. I was sweating so bad. <laughs> but yeah, I I enjoy it now. You know what I mean? It's. No, it's fun. It's fun to die in fun. the group. I wish yeah. all of you were my neighbors. We could have like, you know, they do paint night, you know, where you go. I mean, I've never freeze. done one, but we could do like tie dye night, you know, if everybody like lived here. I mean, that was like so cool when Bridget was able to come and meet me and I was able to meet her and, um, and yeah. like in person and have her die with me. Like that was just so much fun. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Go. So Lila says, go, go with, um, go with a website, which, which one do you use Lila? I was looking at the, is it Shopify? Cause Shopify, uh, and YouTube kind of like have a, they work together. So where, 
I could just easily like put a link, like at the end of the video, it could take people right to a Shopify website. I, yeah, Layla, don't be nervous. I, look, as you see, I will just talk over top of you the entire time. There's nothing to be scared about. <laughs> I That's just, right. I'll just gab and gab and gab away. So seriously though, you're, you're amongst friends. Uh, Seriously, nobody's gonna judge you, and 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 uh, you just tell me what you want to tie up. Will you tie whatever you're most comfortable with, and I will just I'll do that with you, even if I've never done it before. Then you can just teach me as we go. So I mean, that's that's the fun part of it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Etsy Etsy does suck because of the fees and all of that. The only the only positive that I feel about Etsy is people go there purposely to shop. And so, you know, all they got to do is type in tie dye and, you know, if it'll pull up tie dye. Whereas my thought is with, a, um, with just a regular website, if you don't have some way to like seriously promote yourself and get your website out there, people aren't going to know. You know, so for instance, coming on and doing a live, um, you know, we can promote your, your website, but you know, if people don't go on Facebook or stuff like that, it's hard to get your name out there. So that's, that's a good thing about having Etsy is people are already there specifically shopping for tie dye, if that's what they're there to buy. Okay. What do you think? Should I do... I'm really feeling like going for I'm going for it, you guys. I'm doing it. Or maybe not. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking of doing the, the cornflower blue, but then I'm scared. Like, what if it's... No, I'm doing it. Forget it. We'll see what happens. If it turns out terrible, well, then I will know next time that I shouldn't have done that. So we're going to have a kind of like a darker blue in the center, then a lighter blue, and then it'll fade out into a purple. And that, that is what I'm hoping is going to happen. So. You, why Jen? Like you, I mean, so Jen said, sadly, we can't leave Etsy. Like what? D have you promised them like your, third born child i mean why can't you leave because people just know it or oh it's too late gold would have been so cool i didn't even think about putting gold i've already got blue down next time i'll do gold i'll do a gold next time i'm not gonna chicken out next time i'm gonna make a flaming red and i'm gonna do what i wanted to do uh Instagram hates me, lol, but that would be nice. Let's see. Scott, what are you going for? Scott, what are you going for is the question. I'm going for uh, colors that aren't real hardcore bright, but I'm laying down uh, mint green, uh, kiwi, citrus yellow, wedgewood blue, avocado and palomino gold and i'm just going to lay it down and uh that's going to be pretty put my juju on it and see what happens i guess no that that's going to be pretty uh i just I try to stay away from the oranges and the browns uh and purples on my uh uh especially oranges and purples on my spirals why? And especially, especially any colors that are going to be sitting close to each other, it can make brown. Because I like to put a good incline on my, uh, a pretty steep incline on my uh, spiral. Okay, so, I, I mean, are you talking about in this particular shirt or in general, you do not like to make purple and orange spirals? In, just in, gen in general, that's just oh. me because I'm afraid of getting brown. Oh, okay. I, I try to stay away from colors that make brown. So let me, can I tell you guys a little secret? Scott does not watch my YouTube videos because if he did, he would know. <laughs> what do I always say, you guys? 
Somebody, somebody say what I always say. What? So what oh. I always, what I always say is a little brown, like wh what whoever started the the fear of brown and put the fear of brown in all of us, we got to get over it because a little bit of brown is okay. Yeah, I, I mean I get you. Lots of my shirts where the colors run together have, it, and it's not, it's not brown. It's like, it's like golden purple. I mean, I make purple and orange shirts all the time on purpose and they're gorgeous. If I do say so. Yeah. Myself. If I do say so myself. And for you to say that I don't like your videos, that's highly untrue because. Well. To be, I, on, be honest with you, I learned everything from you and just took it when i first started i i took everything that i learned from you to hot water oh, so that kind of gave me a uh a different look than what you were getting and i was still getting kind of like my own thing um but i absolutely do watch your video uh, i'm giving you a hard time i'm teasing Okay, I have no, no, I no. Heard. I mean, I I know that you have watched them in the past. I'm I'm teasing. It's just I'm I am constantly harping on the brown thing. And did any of you just see what I just did? <sighs> I just dumped dye everywhere. Oh man! Like everywhere. Well, don't do that, you guys. Try not to bump your jar on your tote and pour dye on every dye jar and lid that you have open. Well, that's going to be really fun to clean up. No, I no, I'm I'm just teasing, but no, I I I repeat myself. See, I so when I make a when I make a YouTube video, I have to assume that that video is the very first video that that person's ever watched. So I have to repeat myself constantly. And one of the things I repeat all the time is do not be afraid of brown. So I challenge you one of these days to make a shirt that has um some gold and some purple and you know some uh like golden yellow it it looks beautiful together if you if what you have to do is you know pay attention to the color wheel if you sandwich like if you sandwich red violet in between um so ultraviolet then plum or excuse me, ultraviolet, then red violet, and then go into like golden yellow, there's enough red in your red violet to temper that brown. You, you have to really go with color theory when playing with fun colors. What am I going to do? Yeah. I've actually never had this big of a dye mess yet. Huh. Oh, that sucks, man. Yeah, I could have made like five shirts out of the amount of dye I just put on my table. Damn it. Okay, well, while I just cover this up so it doesn't float and loft around, let me get some ice on this thing. What color was that that I spilled? I'll have to go back and watch the video. Okay. Ooh, but it's beautiful. Was it cornflower blue that I spilled? I don't know, whatever, but it's a beautiful shade of blue. That is for certain. And blue being one of the hardest colors to get out of your table. I'm going to be having blue on my projects for here till next year. Because you know how it goes, right? It floats into every nook and cranny. Okay. So now I'm going to give a sprinkle of soda ash. But yeah, on the shirt you're making right now, I, I with all those greens, no, I wouldn't put orange on it. 
You know, I, I would stick I would stick with the greens. Kiwi is super fun. I just did use Kiwi for the very first time from ProChem, and it has a lot of uh, golden and brown in it just already. So it splits down. So it's a fun color because it's like a kiwi. So it's green like a kiwi, and then you know how the skin is brown, and it splits down into that brown color. It's super fun. I'm using a little bit of it now myself. Yeah. I didn't make a video for it, but um, super fun. But I will make a video for it eventually. All right. So I just gave it my quick little sprinkle of soda ash, and now I'm going to add my ice. I'm going to fill up my nubs. I'm going to try to keep uh, the blue from going into my nubs. Ooh, I think the purple on the ends is going to be pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay. I was worried that I wasn't going to have enough ice to cover the project, but... This little frigid air, it really, it, it has surprising amount of ice for one bin. And the whole time I've been adding the dye, it's been over there filling up. So now what I'm going to do from here, you guys, is I'm just going to, I'm going to set it in the house where it's nice and warm and then go to bed because I got to get up early in the morning. And then, but before, before I take off, I'm going to uh, more than likely add a second layer of ice just to really make sure that I'm pushing all of the dye through all of those thick layers in this tapestry. So but that'll be done off camera really super early in the morning. So oh, I'm gonna have to put more gloves on. Oh, my iPad's dying. Give me one sec, let me go find my charger. Okay. So yeah, man, do a spiral. You can do it completely underneath your, your uh, spider guard like that. Keep okay. it all nice and tight. And then do it under, uh, put wrap tape around it. And then you don't have to worry about rubber bands or uh, string or anything like that flipping your dye into places you don't want it to be. Now, of course, you can still make a, you know, Hit your spoon and then knock it, knock your dye off into places you don't want. But you know, it definitely helps. And I saw Raya do it, I believe, on YouTube. Yeah, Raya uses tape. She, and I, man, it, it was just a game changer after that for me. I mean, I, I mean, I think lots of people use it, but I've definitely seen Raya's tutorials where she uses the tape. Yeah, yeah and. Where I saw it first, for sure. Yes, uh, Melanie, I did. I pre-soaked the tapestry um, in the soda ash bucket. I pre-soak all the stuff I use. Um, so that, I mean, that's just a good thing for you guys to know. Unless I specify otherwise, everything is pre-soaked in the soda ash bucket for at least 20 minutes. But let's be real. It's probably been soaking in there for like three weeks because I've been dragging my heels on making this tapestry. Um, and then and then I spin everything out in my panda spin dryer. And Scott, that's the next thing for like your Christmas or your birthday present. You definitely want to get yourself a panda spin dryer. Like the, the, to the level of serious tie-dyeing that you're at, you definitely want a panda spin dryer. 
Um, everybody, if you guys can get a, a spin dryer, it, it makes all the difference in the world. It just makes life so easy. Okay. So I am going to set this off to the side. Okay. So I'm going to take this in the house real quick, you guys. So it can do its thing and I can attempt to get some of this dye up off the table and get things organized while I look at some questions. I was definitely, I wanted to show you guys a Kiwi shirt, but I was like, I'm not bringing anything near this table until I get this cleaned up because Kiwi is so fun. Okay, let's see. Kiwi by Dharma? Uh, Kiwi by Procam. Okay, that's what I have. Yeah, Kiwi from Procam. Super duper pretty. Nice. Um, I'll have to use it in a shirt. You yes. You've been telling, talking to me about Kiwi, but I thought you were talking about Dharma. I'm surprised. No, I don't. Asking. Uh, no, uh, I don't. To the best of my knowledge, I don't think Dharma has... Oh my gosh, you guys, look at all that. I don't think Dharma has kiwi. That is so much dye. Oh, breaks my heart. Um, yes, please, Linda, thank you. Yes, please, please hit the thumbs up. It just helps, it helps tell YouTube that this live video is cool and, and then it will promote it to other people that weren't able to hang out with us so that they're able to see it. And, hear all the tips and tricks and all the good stuff. Uh, Melanie says your shirt looks like an Easter egg. <laughs> Mine does. Yeah. You're, it, yeah. Well, yeah, it, it is, it is, it, uh, it, it does look like an Easter egg. It's kind of shaped oval shaped. And then all the little, it kind of does look like the actual ad for the, like the little box that we get the little tablets for dying Easter eggs. It kind of looks like that, uh, like the, the picture, the cartoon, like how, you know, their, their illustration, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Linda has her first pro chem order. Linda, what colors did you order? You're going to be really happy. They've got some beautiful, beautiful dyes. Gorgeous, gorgeous dyes. Yeah. I use 50-50 Dharma and, uh, and uh, Pro-Chem. Uh, let's see. Um, wow. I'm, I'm reading. Let's see. Uh, Teresa, way down yonder hobby farm, says, I can't wait to see that finish, Scott. Um, I, I, Scott's, I don't think Scott is set up like he normally is to where he can read comments. So I'm just trying to read him, read him what you guys are saying. Uh, Vibrant Die has joined the house and he's saying hello to everybody. Or maybe he's saying hello. goodbye. He could be saying goodnight since we're wrapping up. Uh, I, or maybe you are just getting in. Vibrant dye is a grateful dye guy for 90% of his colors. I think, you know, a lot of it also, oh, cool. I think it depends on where you live too, you know? Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm, yeah. I'm Definitely. one state away from Dharma. So it just makes sense for me to order because the shipping, shipping is still astronomically high, but considering that I'm close to them, it's not necessarily as expensive as, ordering let's say from the east coast and you know i as much as i do not want to promote dharma anymore uh dharma really does have the largest selection of colors to choose from um yeah they do they got a bunch of colors linda definitely got stormy skies and spicy plum and six others it will be a surprise i don't remember LOL. I also got Dharma and Dice Pin this week. Oh, yeah. Linda, you jumped in both feet. You're going for it. <laughs> All it takes is that first tie-dye to have it turn out and, and get that adrenaline rush, those endorphins flowing, and, and then you're off to the races. I, I know. I mean, I, I started out with six dyes, and then you know, six months later, I had every color of Dharma. 
I mean, I, every paycheck was like just buying more dye. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I was addicted big time. Let's see. I read the end of the month. This he will be. I'm late. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know what we're talking about, Teresa. But way down yon. Teresa says, I read the end of this month. He will be. I missed it. I don't know what, what we're doing at the end of the month. Oh, my God. I, I can't get away from this dye. Wipe and wipe and wipe. And then my gloves are so covered. It just keeps putting it everywhere. That sucks, man. It does suck. It, yeah. Yeah, Buy, buying dye and, and uh, making tie-dye, it definitely, you know, it, 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 it's, it is like a drug, but it's, you know, it's a good, it's a healthy drug. It's, it's therapy. It's color therapy. It's good for us. You know, just make sure you wear your protective gear. Uh, because if you don't, then it's not good for you. It could be hazardous to your health. Was it the cerulean blue that I spilled? I'm going to have to go back and watch this video. Oh man. Well, I'll have to show you next time. I, I don't dare put anything near this table until I can remove everything and bleach it. When I have a problem, like something like this happens, I actually use, <clears throat> I use mold and mildew remover, like the stuff that you use to clean your shower. I will spray my entire table and let it sit and then wipe it up with paper towels and like this stuff takes dye off like a champ. So, all right. Well, what is, so what are we doing next? <laughs> I'm going to bed is what we're doing next. Uh, I know we're having a lot of fun. If I didn't have to get up in the morning, we could stay up all night and just keep dying away. But um, I got to get up early. Uh, but uh, the plan, Scott and I plan or hope to I gotta find somewhere to set my iPad um Scott and I plan and hope to tie up a heart because um Valentine's Day is coming um but we'll take suggestions uh I mean we're, we're not gonna stop we're just getting started on these live videos you guys right so um, yep. uh, yeah, vinegar, Aaron, vinegar is also a very non-toxic, healthy way to clean your table, um, for sure. Uh, probably a lot smarter and safer than me using bleach spray, but I am, I'm cool with using lots of chemicals to get rid of what I don't want. But yeah, vinegar vinegar is good. Let's see. Uh, I'm currently working on tying a Courtney Pollock style tapestry. I am not familiar with uh, who Courtney Pollock Goodness. is. I don't. What is that? I don't know what that is. I wish. I. Wish. He did a lot of the Grateful Dead tapestries that were like backdrops for the Grateful Dead. Oh, they were playing and his live. name is Courtney Pollock. Because I'm thinking of like Jackson Pollock, the like the splatter paint guy. Isn't that his name, Jackson Pollock, the splatter paint? Okay, so yeah, so so Courtney Pollock and I, I be, I have to admit, you guys, I'm not a deadhead. I'm, I'm not familiar. I mean, not the stuff that they play on the radio. Um, I'm not, I'm not into the Grateful Dead. I know for a tie dyer, <laughs> but I, so I don't, I wouldn't even know what a Grateful Dead tapestry looks like. I, what is that? Like a steely? I mean, I know what steelies are. Well, no, I mean, they're just like backdrops. Back in the 60s, and, but late 60s and 70s, this guy did uh, tie-dye backdrop. They were humongous tapestries. 
and we would put them behind the band, you know, and the band would play in front of them and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, is there, is there, like, is there, check it, check him out. Check well, him out. I put will. I'll, I'll have to Google it. I'm going tie dye, and man, you'll be amazed. Is it? Well, I, I will. I will Google it. Him. But is it just any old pattern, spirals, spirals, and no, that, or it's just Shibori, Shibori ish, like. Uh -huh. It's not, it's his own thing, you know what I mean? But it's kind of shibori-ish, kind of. Uh, the, the video I watched on him, he was like dip dying. Where he would fold it and then dip it and then fold it and then dip it. Yeah, um, Vibrant Dye, I apologize. We're going to have to do What's your first name? So I'm just not calling you Vibrant Dye. I, I follow your uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> And that's another thing, you guys. If you have YouTube channels, uh, you need to tell me that you have a YouTube channel because I don't watch much YouTube. I watch watch the people that I watch, but I don't watch any of the new channels. So if you if you have <clears throat> if you have a YouTube channel, you need to announce it here, and I will follow you back. I mean, it's that's what we do: follow for a follow. Um, you know, vibrant dyes, you, I know you do that trip style dye, or I think that's what it's called. Um, you know, like the psychedelic brain melt looking style of tie dye, yeah. uh, which I believe is called trip style. Yeah. From that, that guy's YouTube channel, which I, I'm, I'm so terrible, like... I have met so many people. I do not know everybody's names. I know Trip Style. He's super famous in the tie dye world. I do not know his name. I know his work when I see it, but I, I, I have no idea who he is personally. <clears throat> um, yeah. Yeah. That's great work. Oh my gosh. Let's see. In his video, he's center in a shirt and he's just standing there. He doesn't even have a table. Who? Oh, yeah, right, 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 no. Centered. Yeah, he, exactly, no. He's yeah, centering his shirt, standing up. Uh, yeah, yeah well, man. that's, using... when you've been tie-dying for, like, a long time, yeah, you know, you know how to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, no. you know, that, <laughs> I mean, basically, that just comes from tons, tons of experience. Well, I tell you what, try it yourself. Watch the video and try it yourself. You'll be amazed. You'll be able to do it. and You'll be like, wow, man. He, it isn't like he just makes it look easy. Of course he does. He's a pro, but yeah, I no, mean, I mean, I, no. I pick it, it. I was like inspired, man. I picked up my shirt and and uh, oh, you can do it. Oh, I can yeah, do absolutely. it. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I mean, it, it takes me like but an hour, I mean, but I can do it. Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. You know that that just comes with experience. I mean, you know, we we all have to start somewhere. And, and then we, we learn and move on and, and go from there. And yeah. yeah, so I have no idea how long trip dyes has been tie dyeing, but I'm guessing longer than just COVID, you know? Oh yeah, I would imagine, my goodness. He's so, some crazy stuff. I'm not gonna smear this shirt all over just in case there's dye, but this is what Kiwi from ProChem looks like. I I don't have a tutorial on it. So oh, this yeah. ultimately this will ultimately end up on Etsy. Um and I don't have a tutorial and that's that's cool. So I mean I'm not you guys can when it gets to Etsy you can look at it even further. But Kiwi is a fun color. It's got it's like lime pop. It's like lime pop, lime squeeze, and then it's got some watermelon in it. Um, and then like the brown I was talking about, and it's actually not really brown. It's more that the, like the watermelon color mixes with the lime pop and kind of makes like brown. But see, this is like the good kind of brown. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like the kiwi skin. So kiwi is a really fun color from Pro Chem, you guys. I, I definitely do recommend it if you like the bright greens. Um, this this is I don't know Scott, you probably can't see it, but this this is my version of a centerfold. I love it. 
I can see it. Yeah, I got dots over here. No, it's it's a it's a fun color. Yeah, it's a very hot pink. It's a super pretty. It's pretty. It's fun. Let's see. Um, let's see. Vibrant dye at Rick. You can go to my page. Rick, John Riley. Where can I check out your work? Okay. Oh, we got people having side conversations, so that's awesome. Oh, Vibrant Dye, your name is John Riley. Is that what you're saying? Awesome. Good to know. Good, good, good to know. And then here, I'll just show you these before we wrap it up. I have my first pair of Crocs. Bo bought me some tie-dye Crocs, and they're super fun. They're my favorite thing ever, which you guys, those of you that know me, know that rainbows are my favorite tie-dye. So he got me some rainbow Crocs and they are comfortable. Super comfy. All right, guys, we've been on here long enough for the night. Thank you for tuning in and hanging out with us. This was completely spontaneous. Um, thank you, Scott, for joining me and getting me motivated to get that tapestry tied up because um, we want to get the, the giveaway going for Goyo's Garden and tie-dye. So Absolutely. Yep. And then for all of you that tuned in and stayed with us for all of this, thank you so much. I will try to plan ahead, but if you turn your bell to all and set your, your device notifications to on for YouTube, these random live videos will pop up. You'll get a notification that way you're, you're not missing anything. So definitely recommend it. And then, oh, look at how that turned out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that turned out excellent. That's just uh, dusty purple. Yeah, dusty purple is a fun one for sure. That is throwing, that out, is throwing out greens, like emerald green and uh, this purple, almost plumish like. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy color. No, it it um it is really pretty. It's definitely got that emerald green. It's got that like the wine, the burgundy wine, you know, called the main like the the yeah. purplish color and then the lavenders and mine mine throws out Spice. gray. Yeah, it kind of does, except for the spicy plums green is more like it's just brighter. It's a brighter green. This is more like a, like a, this is like forest green and spicy plum is more like emerald green. And then my, yeah. my, um, dusty purple throws out a lot of gray too. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what no, this and, is. and what are you calling that style? What is the name for that? Uh, I don't know. I thought black hole, but I don't know. Okay. Kelly told Kelly told me how to do it, and I just did it. So. Yeah. So if you guys want to know, because I don't, I don't think you made a tutorial. Where this this pattern originates from, it's casual collisions. And if you want to go see an, uh, an actual tutorial on how it's made, you can go check out casual collisions. Um, I know lots of people on Facebook have made them and have done like picture tutorials, but if you want to leave out of here and go see how Scott made this shirt, check out Casual Collisions. He does some awesome stuff. He, he well, <laughs> I no, I mean, I no, it. I mean, it is. Well, it's, it's your style now. I mean, this is, you can call it whatever you want. I, I mean, it's, it's a gravity dye. It's a, it's it's a vortex gravity dye. That'd be a perfect name for it, because uh, that's kind of what it looks like. It vortexes you right in through the center and down into the vortex you go. Um, but I mean, technically, it's a gravity dye, and it's beautiful. It turned yeah. out it turned out excellent. I mean, it's it's stunning, absolutely beautiful. Good good job, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Nothing to it, really. I mean. You know, yeah. sometimes the, the full, sometimes when there's no fold, you get the best results. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I don't have luck with the gravity dyes. My batching, like when yeah. I go to wash them out, the, all the just washes away. The, the vibrancy. I put just, a lot of dye on this sucker. Yeah. It, I, it, I put it, too much. 
Mine disappears. So I just, I, I'm not enjoying the gravity work because I don't have success. Now, when summer yeah. comes, I'll, I'll give it a valiant effort again when it, you know, it's hot. But right now it's yeah. just, it's way too cold and I'm, it's too much work. And, but yeah, no, it, uh, let's see. Lila says it looks like an eyeball. Evil says she's getting the flower uh, vibes. Linda says great color. Um, what's this? Mid I need my glasses. Midnight Kiss says if it were reds and orange, it would be the the eye of Sauron. How do, how do you say that? The eye of Sor Sauron? Sauron? I don't know. Sorry, I'm not doing it justice. I'm I'm think is it like an Egyptian thing or an Asian like uh, history type thing? The Eye of Sauron. Sauron. Have you ever heard of that? I haven't. Yeah, I've heard of the Eye of. Oh, Sauron. Lord of the Rings. Never seen the Lord of the Rings, you guys. Don't know anything about it. So okay. It's, we, we've been on a long time. It's time to go. I'm going to let all of you guys go and get some rest. Scott, thanks again. I totally appreciate it. We'll do this You're again. You're more than welcome. Absolutely. Try, oh, we'll, we'll try to give more notice next time. Um, thank you everybody for tuning in. And then um, stay tuned for Goyo's Garden and Tie Dye. Um, he will be doing his giveaway for 1,000 subscribers. If this tapestry turns out, um, it'll be up for for a raffle. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, everybody. Good night, Scott. We'll, we'll Thanks. Talk to you Thank soon. you. Good night. Bye. Bye.